everybody. Thanks very much for being here. I'm Dr. David Morwood. Tonight we're going to talk about facial rejuvenation and modern approach to facelifting and modern approach to facial rejuvenation, emphasizing mini, mini incisions and short scars, etc. We started this series a number of years ago, calling it the truth about plastic surgery for people in the beauty industry. Uh, because so many people go to their hairdresser and go to people who already work in the beauty industry to get advice. Um, and I think that there are lots of myths and misconceptions on the internet and lots of advertisements that I'm not sure that people can rely upon. So we started the series um, and expanded it to the public basically because I want people to see the truth as I see it. I'm going to show actual before and after pictures of patients who have given uh, their permission to use the images for teaching, and we're going to show some diagrams and anatomy, and we're going to talk a lot about uh, what we do for facial rejuvenation. First of all, people say to me, um, why do you call it uh, plastic surgery? Is that because you use a lot of plastic and silicone in your work? Actually, the root plastico is the same in Greek, which means to mold, shape, and tailor, and that's what we do. Sometimes people come in and they say, Dr. Lord, I know you take care of lots of serious problems, and you operate overseas on children, and and you take care of cancer and things like that, and they say that they may feel vain about coming in to talk to a plastic surgeon. Actually, it's normal, natural, healthy to be concerned about your appearance. Everyone wants to look their best. If we see someone on the street who is not concerned about their appearance, we <coughs> recommend that as being a little bit odd. And for thousands of years, our species uh, has been decorating ourselves with scars and tattoos and stretching earlobes and stretching necks and keeping feet small and uh, it's been going on for thousands of years so it's just it's actually part of part of our being so and keep in mind that the face is a very powerful tool of communi communication and plastic surgeons study this kind of type of thing of course we communicate with our voice but second to our voice it's the face and eyes that convey a lot of information and, and convey our feelings some of us, some ethnic groups, some of us use our limbs to convey uh, emotion about what we're feeling, and of course body language is important. But in this scale, the face and eyes are second only to the voice and how we communicate. Now everyone in this room, if I put two pictures side by side of, peop of the same person who is at different, at different ages, I bet you almost everybody in this room could pick out the younger and the older picture. Um, there are signs of age that we all know. You know, I, I don't want to go through all of these, but there's changes in each layer. And when you come into the office for consultation, you'll meet my staff and you'll meet me. And what we need to do is design a custom approach for you based on your anatomy, how you've aged and what, what it is that you want, going through the skin, and then we look at the fat and the fascia and the muscle and the cartilage. So as I said, almost anyone here could look at a picture and tell that this is the same person many years later after sun and wind exposure and being weathered. So this is one of the most important slides I'm going to show tonight. When we talk about modern facial rejuvenation, I would, like, I would encourage everyone, and when you come in for consultation, to think of the pyramid or the triangle laying up upon a foundation. We need to look at your skin. We need to look at the volume in your face because as we mature we tend to lose fat in our face and in our hands and we gain weight in our trunk. It's kind of a dirty trick but that's what happens. With time we lose fat in our face and in our hands and we gain weight in our trunk and what that does is allows gravity to then pull down on the tissues and things like mid-face descent and a more prominent neck and jowls develop. So please keep that in mind that that's number two in our pyramid or triangle. Now, number three, we need to look at soft tissue position and the amount of soft tissue like skin. Now, traditionally, people think of that as surgery. But for effective, long-lasting facial rejuvenation, we really need to look at all parts of the triangle. We need to look at your skin, we need to look at the volume, and we need to look at soft tissue position and amount. Now, on top of that, we also need to look at the foundation, and that's essentially the skeleton, the bones, the cartilage, the nose, sometimes the ears. Some people, I recommend to them that we do some modification of the foundation, or some people want more prominent cheekbones, or they want, might want their chin br brought forward, etc., or they want their nose to be a little shaped differently. But this diagram that I'm showing here, modern facial rejuvenation, skin, volume, 
soft tissue position amount and amount on top of the foundation is very important. So what that leads us to is that every patient deserves a custom designed approach. This is not a practice where you get in line and everybody gets the same treatment, everybody gets the same operation. You know, there are things you can find on the internet, this magic lift and this lift and this process where people get in line and I guess you don't even meet the surgeon, everybody gets the same thing. This is a custom designed approach. Not everyone ages the same. We have different genes and different ethnicity and we're expo exposed to different sun amounts and wind amounts and we grow up in different places, etc. So, this slide, keep it in mind as we talk today because we're going to be going back to this. We need to go through the anatomy uh, and we'll do this in your consultation. The epidermis is on top of the dermis. The epidermis is what we see. That's the, where we see a lot of brown spots and fine lines and sometimes the skin will lack a glow if the keratin layer gets too thick. That's the epidermis on top of the dermis. The dermis is really where the strength is, is the blood supply, the collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acids. Those are very important molecules within our dermis where the strength is. The subcutaneous tissue, that's where the fat is. Then there's fascia on top of the muscle. And then the lining of the bone is called the periosteum on top of the bone. So for intention purposes and for the discussion, the, this, the skin has many different layers, but we need to think about the epidermis is on top of the dermis. Now, for anyone who lives in California, you probably love the outdoors, as I do. However, keep in mind that the sun is not our friend in terms of maintaining youthful skin. And if you come in and see our esthetician or see a dermatologist or anyone skilled in facial rejuvenation, they're going to encourage you to use sunblock, wear hats, avoid direct sun, etc. Because there's actually something that occurs with chronic sun exposure called photoaging. And that occurs on sun exposed areas. And there are actually histologic, histologic changes. In other words, we can do a little skin biopsy of an area that's been exposed to the sun and compare it after treatment and how the skin does or compare it to an area that has had very little skin, a sun in, its, in the person's lifetime. And there's differences, real differences that we can see under the microscope. For example, here's a biopsy of an area on a person that has had very little sun exposure. And here is a biopsy on, a, on the same person that has been exposed to the sun. That's near a liver spot, so-called liver spot, sunspot. Mm. The collagen is disordered. There's more uh, pigment. Some of you are concerned with spots on your, you know, brown spots on the mm. face and on the back of the hands, etc. Now, what about skincare essentials? Number one, as I said, we need to avoid direct sun. Sunblock can be very helpful. Hats are big help. Uh, hats are helpful. Again, anybody who lives in California, you probably love the outdoors, but we need to avoid direct sun. Number two. We need to teach you how to properly cleanse your skin, depending on the type of skin you have. Number three, exfoliation. What's exfoliation? We want to encourage that keratin layer and the very top layer of the epidermis to shed. We don't want that keratin layer to be too thick. When it's too thick, people's skin loses the glow, and we want vibrant, glowing skin, healthy skin. Now, to restore, what we want to do is turn on that germinal matrix, the basal membrane, to really churn. There's a factory there that makes new cells. Keep in mind it takes about 30 days for a new cell to get to the top where you can tell or, or where you can tell it's there or see it. Sometimes I hear people say, well Dr. Morwood, I tried for two weeks and I use skin products and I don't really notice any difference. You've barely you, you haven't even given yourself time for one baby cell to come to the top. So just think if you if you hung in there with the program for <coughs> six cycles, six months, or nine cycles, which is nine months, you can actually see a difference in your skin. Moisturizing is very important because as the skin gets dry, especially thin skin around the eyelids and the lips, it looks like crepey skin and wrinkles, but it's really this that the skin is being dried out. Now, second only to avoiding the sun, avoid smoking. One puff of cigarette smoke has thousands of oxidants, like rusting the vessels, the microvascular in the skin. Uh, you've heard of antioxidants. Well, well, tobacco smoke just does the opposite of that. Now, very briefly, if you see a dermatologist or esthetician or plastic surgeon, you're likely to have your skin categorized. We call this the Fitzpatrick categorization. Essentially, it's one through six. Number one are the people from Northern Scandinavia. 
they never tan, they always burn all the way to the deepest pigment uh, people from Africa that they never, never tan and never burn. Most people are in the middle. This helps us categorize your skin care and what you need, etc. So, concepts of beauty. Let's start by talking about some cosmetic <coughs> non-invasive treatments like facials, microdermabrasion, food acid light peels, IPL, um, etc. I think these can be very valuable. I'm a big believer in estheticians and facials and coming in and having your skin analyzed and getting on a regimen, which may lead you up to something like a TCA peel with me or laser treatment, etc. Now, cosmetic invasive treatments like Botox, fillers, peels, as I mentioned, some lasers and dermabrasion, sclerotherapy, uh, those can be more powerful and helpful, and, with, and they're minimally invasive. Now, what we need to do is keep in mind that these treatments are aiming to restore vascularity to the dermis and increase the hyaluronic acids, increase the collagen, increase the elastin. So those molecules and compounds actually are naturally occurring in the dermis, and there are some fillers and treatments that we can recommend to you and get you started on regimens that will actually improve the health of the dermis. Things like retinoic acids, I think everybody's heard of Retin-A. Um, vitamin, some vitamin C treatments, some CO2 lasers, and some fillers containing hyaluronic acids can actually result in a healthier dermis with more collagen. For example, here's a, bio, a skin biopsy uh, of a person with some sun damage with a relatively thick keratin layer. See the very tough layer starting to almost peel off. And after about six months of recommended medical grade skin care, the dermis is much thicker, much more orderly, more collagen, more hyaluronic acids and elastin. So you've got to hang in there, but it can really work. There's some sci scientific foundation for that. Now, what I want to emphasize is that the cosmetic treatments we're talking about do not remove extra skin or dramatically tighten loose skin. Think of the triangle. We need to approach those three parts of the triangle or pyramid separately or together, but, but the different treatments don't replace one another. In other words, we can treat the skin, we need to look at the volume of treatments for that, and we need to look at the soft tissue position and amount on top of the foundation. So, cosmetic treatments do not remove extra skin or dramatically tighten loose skin, and the converse is true that if I do an operation, we cannot operate away wrinkles and fine lines. We need to refer again to the pyramid, to the triangle, and be concerned with the skin texture, the volume, soft tissue position, and amount on top of the foundation. And that's part of what we do when you come in and meet my wonderful staff, and meet me, and then do the Vectra. I'm delighted that we have this pretty sophisticated system, it's called the Vectra. It's six cameras attached to a computer, and it takes a second to have your image taken, but then the computer, computer processes it, and then you can see yourself in three dimensions and rotate it, and we can do some sculpting and show you what a peel may do for you and improve the neck, etc. And it's a pretty expensive piece of equipment that most of my patients really like and value. It's a great communication tool, because people can sit there and look at themselves on the side and then rotate their, their three-dimensional almost like a statue, 90 degrees or 180 degrees the other way, and point things out, and it's a great communication tool. So, the skin, care, the skin treatments uh, addresses the issues with the skin. The proce surgical procedure addresses the soft tissue position and amount. So, I'm not, I'm not against things like laser. I love TCA peels, it's similar to a laser. Now here's a before and after, rec um, lent to me by a friend, these photos, and essentially laser is a heat. It's a type of energy that transmits, transmit, transmits heat to the skin. Now you see improved texture of the skin, mm -hmm. but there has not been a dramatic decrease in the amount of skin or tightening of the skin. So I use this photo <laughs> as an example. As I said, laser is a heat. Laser is a way of, of controlled heat to the skin. Now, most people are familiar with bacon. You take it out of the package, out of the fridge, it's supple and soft and moist, right? You could probably tie it in a knot. Now, if you expose it to heat, 100% it will shrink. We know that. However, it becomes brittle, right? You can't tie it in a knot, it's probably gonna snap or break. And what I'm encouraging, remember I talked about the skincare? 
We want supple, soft, moisturized skin with lots of hyaluronic acids and elastin and collagen. So, again, remember I said the triangle and the pyramid is one of the most important things we can talk about tonight? We need to look at the skin, we need to look at the volume, and we look at, need to look at soft tissue position of surgery. And, of course, my wonderful staff found this uh, image for me because when the only tool you own is a hammer, the whole world looks like a nail. And what we want to do is, uh, for you is a custom designed approach, layer by layer, and design something for you, not the same thing for everybody. So, for example, I talked about laser, and a TCA peel is something that the esthetician can do in low concentrations. It's fine in California for the, for the esthetician to do that, uh, usually under my direction in low concentrations. When we get to a higher concentration, I do it because it's, it's powerful. And I want to show you uh, some examples. Now, uh, I'm going to show you a photo of, of a girl who needs nothing done. One, thing, one of the um, things that I think my wonderful staff will teach you if you schedule a consultation is we encourage people to bring in photographs from prior decades because I love to study how, people, uh, how people's faces change the fat compartments have shifted, how much fat have you lost, what's your skin been like. So, this is a gal who brought in this picture, I think from her college graduation, and here she is about 50 years later. So, uh, using the triangle, right, using the pyramid of facial analysis, this is her after treatment. Okay, so she had all three components addressed. We, we did something for her skin, which is a TCA peel, we did conservative surgery, to firm up the skin and remove some extra skin, and we did some volume restoration. Now, my wonderful staff has taught me something that before I show a patient right out of the operating room, I need to let everybody know, okay? So this woman appears in the next slide about five days after surgery. So what we're doing... That's with the peel or with the laser? Okay, so excellent question. She got a perioral scrub with the, with the TCA, trichloroacetic acid, and the peel to the skin of the face in varying amounts. I, cut, I mix it myself right there, from 20% to 25% to 30%, and conservative surgery to firm up the, the soft tissues, and we did some volume restoration. So let me back up. So she went from there to there. So the way a TCA peel works is not much happens for four or five days, and then, for about five days, you'll exfoliate. And then at, that brings you to about day 11. Then you'll have pink skin, which fades over the course of about six weeks, but you can put makeup on it. So you're not confined to your house for six weeks, but most people don't want to go to a <coughs> excuse me, dinner party for those first 10 days, certainly, because you're exfoliating and putting on lots of ointment, et cetera. So was that a peal that you did or the esthetician did? So, so that's the TCA that the peel. Okay, that that's the TCA the peel. The TCA peel and the perioral scrub that I do myself. Okay. And it's um, I, I think you can see it's it uh, it's it's powerful. Can help. Now, here's a gal. And again, these are actually my patients, real people who allow us to use their images. Uh, for teaching. Now, if you look at her, um, you'll notice some changes in her skin, right? Fine texture, textural changes, some <coughs> pigmentation, a little bit of loose skin, needing volume, some of the skin is sagging. Now, uh, sometimes I teach people to think of a, a, a balloon, right? An air balloon that's really tight and full of air, and you let a little bit of air out of it and allows it to kind of like sag a little bit, right? So. If we do some volume <coughs> restoration, instead of just pulling the skin really tight, lift and fill. That's what I'm an advocate of. Lift and fill and look at the skin. So here she is at about day eight, and then here she is at about six weeks later. Okay, so lift, fill, and address the skin. All three parts of the pyramid. When you're saying lift, you're meaning? A procedure to make incisions. Yes. Yeah, all the same day, but we're, we're addressing the components, of the, the pyramid and the triangle. So you're filling, and then you're also filling. all all at the same time, filling, lifting, repositioning, and then addressing the skin. 
Yes. So would you fill it with fat or something else? Okay, see, what a great question. Part, part two of what we're going to talk about today is volume. I'll answer your question, then we're going to talk about it in depth. The two big categories of volume restoration are fillers. I think everybody's heard of fillers probably by now. Juvederm, Restylane, Velotero, right? Collagen. So those are fillers. They come in a syringe or someone's own adipose tissue, their own fat. And we'll talk about that. Was there surgery? What? Yes, uh -huh. yes, yes. Uh -huh. Did so surgery, little surgery? Great question. Yeah. We're going to get to that. Okay. When someone has, when I'm trying to, when I'm making an incision for access to put in fiber optic instruments right. with magnification, typically the, the incisions are short, sure. like in the crease here, mm -hmm. uh, around the ears and the hair. Okay. When someone has lots of skin okay. to be removed or repositioned, okay. the only way to accomplish that is with a longer incision, or usually around the ears or in the scalp, etc. I'm glad to hear these questions because we're going to talk about those things. So, here's a gal who mainly needed her skin taken care of, a little bit of soft tissue positioning. There she is on about day 8, and there she is at about day 21. Getting the idea mm -hmm. of how we look at the individual components and what a TCA peel does. Um, I don't want to bore anybody, but here she is at about mm, day 10 exfoliating, and there she is at about six weeks. So, uh, before I move away from the skin, I want to talk a little bit about perioral lines. A lot of times people will come in and they say that her gals tell me the lipstick kind of runs up and down, and sometimes women tell me even though they deliberately tried all their life not to use straws, they, uh, <laughs> they get the lines, which is amazing to me. But uh, how do we take care of perioral rejuvenation?